Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to the American Acupuncture Council for producing and hosting this presentation. My name is Dr. Shelley Goldstein. And today we will be talking about cosmetic facial acupuncture theory and the treatment for enhancing dermal collagen. So let's go to the slide. Great. Okay. Um, when we talk about enhancing collagen and we talk about cosmetic facial acupuncture, it, this is really not a new topic. It's based on the principles of my rung. My rung needs beautiful appearance. And it is a holistic regime that was practiced throughout Asia for centuries. It was designed to promote systemic health and well being, delay the visible signs of aging. And it was a combination of acupuncture and herbs that were either topically applied or ingested. And the, as the story goes, it was designed for emperors to keep their concubines looking beautiful and healthy and for empresses to maintain their youthful and radiant appearance. But honestly, I believe that there were variations of this service of my wrong regimes utilized in most households throughout Eastern Asia. The today's modern application of ancient my rung is similar and slightly different. We generally use it today as an alternative or an adjunct to facial neurotoxins, volumizers, or other enhancing appearance enhancing services that are mostly familiar in our Western culture. I call what we do this modern application a tight, healthier, tighter, brighter natural look and feel. And that is truly what it is. When we, at, as a cosmetic facial acupuncturist, the, one of the advantages of specializing in any type of profession is that our patients come in with a certain subset of complaints. They're fairly common and, and throughout there's, there are certainly some changes, but for the most part, our patients come in and they talk about wrinkles increasing across their forehead around their eyes, they talk about eyelid ptosis, which is that drooping of the upper lid onto the eye itself, swelling or darkness under the eyes, possibly wrinkling or creasing between the brows and around the eyes. And then in the cheek area, they talk about wrinkling in the cheek area, skin laxity, which is kind of a loose um, pitted appearance, uh, nasolabial fold, that's the fold between the corner of the nose and the corner of the mouth. And then around the mouth and along the jawline, they complain or talk about wrinkling or creasing around the mouth, particularly the smoker's creases above the lips and creasing uh, horizontal creasing below the lips. Marionette lines. Marionette lines are the lines that form between the corner of the mouth and the edge of the jaw area. It's a perpendicular line and then the horizontal line is called the mental crease and it's right underneath the lower lip and then loss of definition along the jaw area and then in the neck patients will talk about their skin being lax or platysma banding platysma banding are these little bands that you see running in a vertical fashion along the neck area and then from a dermatology perspective acne rosacea hyperdyschromia, which we often hear of as sunspots. When we treat with facial acupuncture, cosmetic facial acupuncture, there are both visible uh, changes that we see and then internal changes. So visibly, and this is our topic for today, is toning skin laxity. And we'll talk about these more throughout the year, but today we're gonna focus on skin laxity other changes that you can see with cosmetic facial acupuncture treatment are soft softening of deeper wrinkles, eliminating of fine lines, improvement in muscle tone, correcting and healing skin problems that we discussed, evening skin texture, color and luster, and enhancing the overall appearance and vitality of the face. And then internally, because we are working from the inside out as, as facial acupuncturists, we'll see an improvement in muscle integrity, a thickening of thinning atrophic tissue, which will uh, ties in today's presentation, an improvement in the physical, mental, and emotional well-being of the individual themselves as we are adjusting channels, organs, and other systemic imbalances. 
When we talk about facial aging in our Western culture, we are oftentimes used to immediate gratification. So when we are talking with our patients and working with our patients, we need to be really honest about what it is that we can actually do. And I speak to my patients like this. I say, although this is aging is part of the aging process, you're not going to stop aging. It's normal. It's part of the intrinsic and extrinsic mosaic of aging itself. But what we can do is we can delay those signs of aging. And when we treat you with one treatment, we can see short-term benefits lasting maybe three to seven days. And then generally, when we perform this in a series of treatments, averaging 10 to 12 times per, at once a week, we can see longer benefits lasting between four and 16 weeks. And then we're going to maintain the results or the benefits of your treatment with monthly maintenance treatments. And that's approximately one time a month. Now, they may be a little bit confused as to why they're not getting longer treatments or longer um, longer effects from our treatments because we are used to immediate gratification with longer term, say three months to six months with neurotoxins and maybe even longer with volumizers or fillers. So I explain it to them as what we're doing is we're taking your face to the gym. And we talk about going to the gym and the benefits of going to the gym as a cumulative effect. So you can't go to the gym and pump up and then expect to see large muscles, right? What you get is tired and a little bit sore. Um, you're not going to get tired or sore from facial acupuncture, but the concept is we are treating a, giving a series of treatment to make an internal change that will last throughout time. And ultimately you feel healthy and you feel better as well. In 1996, the first landmark study for facial acupuncture measuring the efficacy of it was in the International Journal of Clinical Acupuncture. They took 300 cases. This was in, treated in China. They gave them facial acupuncture, 10 treatments, one time a week. And the patients noted a 90% market effect in terms of their subjective experience of the treatments. The benefits they it, it said was there was an improvement in skin texture, skin color, skin elasticity, wrinkle reduction, and overall rejuvenation. And also they noted that these results were not just confined to the face, but also included work from the practitioner's point of view to address the entire body, the organ system, as well as the face. So ultimately what we're doing is Chinese medicine. We're treating the body to sustain the changes on the face for appearance enhancement. And the reason why we are working in that vein is because we are traditional Chinese Eastern medicine practitioners. And it's because we still are applying the concepts of channel theory. We are looking at cosmetic facial acupuncture as a whole systems approach towards diminishing the signs and symptoms of wrinkling. This means that we, when we are support, when we are treating with facial acupuncture, we are treating and supporting the entire patient. That's foundational because even though the wrinkles and the other facial concerns are the chief complaints, we are looking at it from a holistic perspective. And we know that the conditions on one's face, the conditions that they're talking about, wrinkles, skin laxity, muscle tone, that type of thing, is really directly related to their internal health and overall well-being. When we treat with facial acupuncture, we're not just working with the face. As practitioners of Chinese medicine, we know that we need to consider and address all of the energetic meridian pathways and all of their corresponding organ systems. And we treat them in the same way that we're treating other conditions with acupuncture. We address those imbalances in those internal systems, digestive, circulatory, reproductive, neuromuscular, whatever it is. And in doing so, we are from the inside helping to diminish those visible signs of aging. When we talk about these concerns, skin laxity, wrinkles, muscle tones, skin dyschromia, et cetera, we call those um, the symptoms. Those are just the symptoms of that underlying pattern of disharmony. And when we treat, we're going to treat the root cause first with body points, and then we're going to treat the symptoms. So we put the points on the 
extremities and then the, and along the torso first. We do our diagnostics, we treat the patient for their underlying condition, we apply acupuncture points on the legs, the arms, torso, and then we address the symptoms or the facial concerns with points on the face. And then we take them out, those needles out in the opposite direction. And that point selection on the body is specifically related to the underlying pattern of disharmony. And the point selection on the face can be either on the meridian, off the meridian, or around the associated channels. And this is what we're going to address today. When we think about acupuncture points, we know that acupuncture points are located in areas with higher concentration of superficial nerves. We know that there are a higher concentration of blood vessels around those points. And we know that there are neuromuscular attachments where those vessels and nerves penetrate the deep of the muscle fascia. What we also know about points, acupuncture points in the body is that when we stimulate the acupuncture points, that sensation is transmitted from the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system by the dorsal root ganglion. We also know that due to neuro, or when we look at neuroimaging, we know that there are acupoint stimulation elicits activity in the brain areas that is associated with that local area that we actually put the needle in, but it also transmits into more distal areas, not on the, need, the point of needle insertion. This is important because when, recently we've discovered that we have interstitium. When we first were looking at bodies and we would dissect cadavers and we would open them up and we would pull out this like sheet of um, kind of sticky, filmy um, substance uh, and we would throw it away. Well, guess what? What we've been throwing away has recently been discovered as a very important it's structure in our body. It's called interstitium, and it is a fluid filled cavity that contains connective tissue, fascia, and fluid. And you can see this in the in the demonstration. This is an um, uh, this top area is a microscopic expansion of what's underneath. And you can actually see that there this whole area is the interstitium so it's made up of fluid filled barriers and then it's made up of these little structures that are more sp support structures called connective tissue and fascia well guess what within that fascia we have collagen collagen is the primary fascial component of that connective tissue or on the face we're going to call it fascia and that collagen actually has an electric signaling component to it. It's called collagen piezoelectricity. Collagen fibers have this mechanical or electric property, and it's actually the basis for communication from the insertion of the needle throughout the fascia and into the, not just the local areas, but more general areas as well. And when we alter that collagen, when something happens like aging, and that collagen, those collagen fibers get altered, it's going to change the physiological response as that stimulation moves out into other areas of the fascia. And in fact, what we've been looking at recently is that that therapeutic efficacy of acupuncture, why acupuncture works, may be linked to this, may be linked to the ability of needle insertion in an acupuncture point to radiate outside of that local area and flow through the interstitial tissue into other areas or other neighboring structures of, of the face or in the tissue. Here's what fascia looks like. You can look at the bottom. It looks like sticky film or some type of a, um, saran wrap that actually does two purposes, either wraps around substances to protect them or connects them such as on the face from say the muscles to the upper layers of the skin. And under repeated or intense stress, that fascial tissue changes and it becomes disorganized and it decreases in flexibility and it loses its ability to, to signal. And if you look at this image right here, this is what collagen stress looks like. This is how it changes from a more plump 
um, area, if you think of your face and you think of this area of the face in a younger person, it's much more plump. But this is what that disorganization of collagen fibers, decrease in flexibility, decrease in, uh, in electric signaling, and ultimately tissue breakdown. So we're going to look at how to change that. Um, here's what it looks like in an image. And here is the superficial area or the top of the skin on the top of our face. And as we age, it moves from the bottom, which is nice, organized, thick banding of, co of collagen tissue to disorganize broken down collagen fibers that then create a pitting area in the surface of the skin. Um, when you think about a mattress, you think about a brand new mattress that's nice and full, it's nice and plump. And as we sleep in that mattress in the same position over and over and over, years and years and years and years later, it starts to form a little pit. That's the same thing as the pitting effect that happens in our skin, that little dimpling or the little um, drop in the in the in the mattress is what we see on the skin and we start we call that collagen breakdown and when that happens skin has no place to go so for the purpose of this today's lecture the um, loss of collagen underneath the surfaces of skin causes that pitting and causes that skin to to drop um, now with an acupuncture needle we can actually make a change so we know that acupuncture needling creates a natural wound healing cascade to release growth factors to stimulate the production and deposition of collagen in the dermal layer of skin. What does that mean? When you look at the skin, there are the very top layer is called the epidermis and the very, very top layer, what you look at when you look in the mirror or you look at somebody else is called the stratum corneum. And then underneath the epidermis is the dermis. And the dermis is actually the integrity or the health of that of our skin tissue. Uh, healthy cells start at the bottom of the, of the dermis and make their way up to the top and float up to the top. As these cells float through this tissue, the integrity or the volume of this dermal layer is supported by collagen. And collagen and another tip is elastin, but we're not going to talk about th that right now. So you can see this thick area in the top corner. These are collagen fibers and the very, very thin ones are called elastin. And the little dots that you see are called fibroblast. Fibroblast are actually what needs to be stimulated in order to make collagen in the skin tissue. And there is research, particularly by a man named Des Fernandez, who has done a lot of work with derma rolling or, or um, skin piercing with acupuncture needles. And what he's found is that when you place a needle into the skin, uh, you create a, a microtrauma in the tissue. And that microtrauma sends in this cascade of information to fibroblasts that say, make collagen, make collagen. And so the fibroblasts just make as much healthy collagen as they can possibly make. So it changes it from uh, being that ununiform uh, clumped appearance of, of collagen underneath the tissue to lay a thicker, as you can see, a, a thicker lining of collagen in the upper dermal layer and throughout the dermal layer as well to support the upper layer of the epidermis. And we do this with needles. We do this with short needles because let me go back, remembering the different layers of tissue and layers of tissue in the body, this layer, this dermis, epidermis, dermal layer is really the very, very surface of the skin of the face. Because if you think about the face and you just take your finger and touch your face, well, before you know it, you're a bone, right? Do you feel that? Before, between the skin, the upper layer of skin and bone, you have muscles, you have connective tissue, you have nerves, you have uh, your circulatory system, you have fat. There are so many layers that uh, are between the surface of the skin and the bone. So when we are treating the, this dermal layer, we actually have to have very, very shallow insertion. And we do that shallow insertion with small, short needles. My favorite and and also the favorite of many of the other practitioners that treat with facial acupuncture for 
appearance enhancement are serins. Serins are always great needles. They And what I like about them is the safety quality about them. They're medical grade stainless steel used uh, around the needle shaft. They're triple polished and clean, cleansed with ultrasound and ac uh, alkaline acid or water to remove foreign substances. And then they sterilize them. And then the honing of them, they're specifically rounded to reduce damage in the skin tissue. Because remember, we're working on people's faces. There are a lot of nerve endings. There are a lot of capillaries and vessels. And so we want to use the best quality needles that we can possibly use in order to get maximum results. And Siren also has a line called J15 that are specifically designed for cosmetic facial acupuncture. And on the on the other slide, um, I tend to use the 42s and 44s, although some people use 40s this, in this area, the ones that, that I like to use. Another great line is called Dongben Corp. They're DBCs. They're made specifically um, for Lhasa OMS. This is another option. They are also well made in compliance with the World Health Organization in the US and then FDA approved for, and throughout Europe and England. Because they are the largest manufacturer of acupuncture needles in the world, they're much more economically priced. They're basically a fifth of the cost of the serum needles. Um, many practitioners will use these needles on the body and then they'll use the serums on the face. There's another company that I really like and use and that called AccuFast. And what I like about them is they're environmentally friendly. Their packaging is biodegradable and, and the plastic material is recyclable. Again, they are Korean made spring handle with surgical stainless steel, they're machine sharpened. There's another, you know, ju there's just another great needle um, in order to eliminate some Accu trash. They, they come 10 needles in a package in a, bliss, in a vacuum seal pouch. Uh, and they sell this tube separately. So in some of these treatments that I'm going to show you or this system, um, you may not need a tube. So um, and so that bulk optional tubes are, are different. And then the other types of needles that we use to penetrate the very surface of the skin it is the intradermal needles, either the straight intradermal needles that run in a horizontal position for insertion in a horizontal manner. These were invented in Japan. And then the press needles that go in vertically, those were come from China. Um, there are many types of intradermals. This is a really good line. It's called Thrive. Great needle, hard to get because they come from England. Um, they're triple pol double polished and there's three different sizes, the gold, the copper and the silver. Again, just another example of a really good line. So those of you who are from the UK are watching from another country. Uh, this you can see I put on the bottom the links to, in order to purchase them or Camo here in the US. Siren has another, the Spinex intradermal needles, I think is acupuncture. We've used these most of the time. And again, um, they're, what's interesting about them is that heat sealed blister pack and then the little ring holder, you definitely need to use tweezers with them. And they make them in certain um, different sizes with a, and they come in a pack, box of 100 needles. Uh, DBC has started to make another intradermal needle that's, that's interesting as well. Uh, again, five needles in a foam pack. And there's a new one coming out. This is not on the market yet, but it's soon to be. They're in their first line of production this year. In, Elipis. I like them a lot, um, but they come in, they're again, the high, same quality as, that, as Siren upholds their integrity of their production of their needles. Um, they come in five needles in a blister pack. What I like about them is that they're short, whoops, they're short, but they also have handles so that you don't need to use tweezers for those of you like me who are somewhat knees, knee, uh, tweezer compromised. <laughs> so, um, And then there's always the Pinex introducing dermals, the single press tax. Um, press tax are great. N not all states will let you leave a needle in their patient. Um, so you need to make sure to contact or find out what your regulations are within your state to see if you can actually leave these in your patient when they're not um, in the office. And again, they come in different diameters as well and lengths.
So let's get to the treatment. Um, when we are treating uh, our patients, this is what we're looking at. Here you can see in the before, this is the image that we um, were looking at before. You take any of those needles that you want to use and you can treat them either on the acupuncture point, uh, either uh, I use the point right lateral to the corner of the mouth, stomach four, depending upon how you can see the skin pitting, you may want to go a little bit higher, but just remember that in order to get the beneficial effects, you don't need to be on the point exactly. So what I might suggest is say needling stomach four, again, don't forget, you're going to um, do your normal intakes and discover your patterns of disharmony, right? So if you look at this, you'll find most people who have this pitting uh, have some type of a spleen deficiency, either weak spleen, uh, digestive disorder, or something like that. Because if you're looking at the stomach meridian, it runs right through this area. And how many people at, as we're aging don't have some type of digestive disorder? Uh, so remember your spleen, remember your stomach, treat the underlying pattern of disharmony and then come back and we're gonna go back and treat this spleen area. So say stomach four, and then take your smaller needles and you can slide them at a 10 to 15 degree angle. Now that's very superficial. That's almost like Japanese acupuncture where you're actually angling them almost parallel to the surface of the skin. So you can take those needles, either the intradermals or the, um, the half inch, and just slide them into the area of deepest pitting. You can also write in here in the intradermal, in the uh, nasolabial fold, just slide them right in there. And then that's a, and then this is what I did. And then after treatment, 10 treatments, you can actually see a much bigger difference. So, um, uh, if you have other questions about those, you can certainly um, let me know. I know these uh, um, are these recordings are available, uh, and you can always contact me uh, just to let you know that I have partnered with the Pacific College of Health Sciences. We offer a program called Facial Applications for Cosmetic Enhancement, which is a much more in-depth program that you can access in the way to. Um, contact us is this phone number and email below. And it's not, we'll be learning my techniques. We'll be learning other techniques with other leaders in the field, such as Matt Callison, Mary Elizabeth Wakefield, Michelle Gellis, Deirdre Courtney, Carrie Hart, a lot more. This program allows uh, financial aid of it as available. Classes begin January of 2023. And then again, if you have other questions, you can follow me on Instagram. Or, and, or contact me at info at hamptonsacupuncture.com. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you for the American Acupuncture Council for allowing me to present today. And also please join in next Wednesday to with Chen Yen. She'll be presenting uh, at the American Acupuncture Council. And I um, hope to see you again. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, I do have a question. Is it, uh, there is one question, Elizabeth, thank you. The, yes, the, the course that is being offered is a hybrid program. So the didactic component of it is online. And then there are five days of hands-on clinical learning uh, offered uh, once or twice a year. Do I recommend patients take collagen? It really depends upon the collagen, uh, remembering that collagen is a large protein and it may or if you are a spleen chi deficient with terrible gut problems, you may or may not be able to absorb it. That that's the clinical, inf the, the written information or the, or the more, um, therapeutic information. However, that being said, I take collagen every day. I use a company called Vital Proteins and honestly, I see a difference in my skin. So uh, yes and no. <laughs> Hope that answers your question. The research says,